Hey, what's up? This is MarketAlchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. A bunch of you have been asking about the Phoenix 1.4 chat server series. I've got the playlist loaded up for it here, chit chat. And people have been asking where part number six is. I did part number five a while ago, and nothing more has been added to the playlist since. The answer to that question is that the series has not been discontinued and that actually I've already recorded parts 6, 7, 8, and 9. They're all on alchemist.camp, the website. However, it's a freemium website and I haven't been putting teaser versions of the premium videos on YouTube. That's because as a YouTube user myself, I don't really get a lot out of that. Um, you know, if, if I have signed up for some freemium membership, then I don't really get anything out of seeing those uh, teaser videos. I just go to the real ones on the site. And if I haven't signed up for it, it might be good to know about it at some point, but I don't want to you know, see these teaser videos come up in my subscriptions all the time. So that's what's going on there. The rest of this Phoenix 1.4 chat server series goes over setting up Phoenix channels using sockets and auth and the JavaScript that needs to be done for the front end of that and also Phoenix Presence, which lets you see who is logged in or who is who is present on a channel and how many devices they're present on. It's, a, it's a, one of the big advantages of Phoenix over other WebSocket options. And then deployment with eDeliver, as I mentioned, a little bit of a, an overview on setting up Nginx blocks, although I've done a, a longer video specifically for that purpose in the past. And then finally, GitLab CICD. So at the end of the series, channels are set up. You can see who's present in each chat room. And tests run automatically with every single Git push. And on any pushes or merges to master, if all the tests pass, it automatically deploys. There's also source code on each of these videos so that you can go to a private gist and see which changes were included in each episode. And this is also something that exists on a lot of the purely free episodes. So if you were to go down to an episode that was free, there would be a good chance that you would also have access to source code that others do not. And not all of the free episodes have this source code, but I do listen to what subscribers want source code for. Some of the old videos, uh, actually most of the old videos, I didn't add source code for. But if you request it, I will add it. Then the final perk is that if you are a paying subscriber, you get more influence over what future topics I cover. So that's it, that's the pitch. If you are a professional developer and are using Elixir or might be using Elixir in the future, I think it's a very good value proposition considering how few hours of your work it actually takes to pay for membership. And if you're not in that situation or if you're just not interested in paid content at all, don't worry, I have made a lot of free content over the past year and a half and I will continue to make more. Till next time, code on.